After five years in development, Atomic Heart finally releases, but does it live up to expectations? Well, fear not my pedigree chums, because Reggie and the boys will deep dive and explain why Atomic Heart, for all its prowess, for all its pizzazz and for its amazing atmosphere, it lacks in the most important of areas. If you want a half decent shooter in an interesting environment, look no further. But if you want more, then Atomic Heart is not for you. So grab yourself a cup of tea and let Reggie explain more. Upon first booting up Atomic Art, you are left impressed. You find yourself in a Soviet parade where Soviet monuments tower over the street below and robots live peacefully with humans. The look and feel was very much Bioshock and Reggie was hard as nails to get stuck into this one. And then the first issues start to appear early on, which is when your character opens up his gobby mouth. Basically, he's a tw with a script that sounds like it was written by a 10 year old who just drank a load of Prime. It goes off in all directions, lacks any sort of emotion and at times it's just sheer cringe inducing. Reggie winks at some of the nonsense coming from his mouth that I started to wonder if this was almost a parody and I was missing out on the bloody joke that maybe it was more akin to a Just Cause bombastic style B movie than anything serious. Here's just a few snippets that made Reggie weep. We could take the same elevator we took to get up here. Thanks, Einstein. What would I ever do without you? Zip it. What? How come? I don't know, damn it. Now quit bugging me. You know what? You're on your own. You well, got this. Where are you going? It's useless. We don't have the equipment. I've got the equipment. Great. You can make things easier by getting off my grill. And your character is full of contradictions too. He tells his AI companion at one point that he trusts no one other than his boss who once saved him on an operating table. Fair enough lad, I get it. You like your respect to be earned and you won't just give anyone your empathy. In my world, that is very much the name of the game. And with that story of the operating table fresh in the mind, you come to this scene where you wake up to some poor sod dying on an operating table, and as he bleeds out, you are told he saved your life. So what do you do to respect him? Well, of course, what you do is you ask this lady some bullshit questions, like what her name is, and you, of course, steal the bloody medicine before giving her the tools to help save his life. Basically, you treat the bloke like he is sub human scum and Reggie is owning in on your character first before really getting on with the review because you feel no empathy towards him and thus you hold no real love to the story that is on offer and that story is decent at best but mostly it's uninspired where robots go AWOL and your job is to track down a little prick that started it all and it's okay to have a shit story if everything else clicks along at a nice pace. Which is why the combat elements need to be so strong here. It needs to snap, it needs to be accurate, it needs to make up for the terrible character and sadly the combat is so-so. There were some things I liked about it but others that I absolutely hated. I like the fact that it mixes melee and shooting, a sort of cross of dying lights, weighty swings and hits, along with the usual shooter style gun. In particular, there's a vast skill tree to discover here, where weapons can be crafted and updated, which comes in use when enemies come at you in vast numbers. Just like Bioshock, your little hand will have special abilities, yes you little wankers, and they can also be upgraded too. Some of these are particularly interesting, and it shows you a glimpse of a world where Atomic Heart has the ingredients to be an absolutely smashing shooter game. So why does Reggie hate it so? Well, it comes down to its poor execution. Enemies, for example, are just sponges, sucking up hits and bullets like no tomorrow, and they can dart around the environment swiping at you all day long. In the absence of an FOV slider, you find yourself constantly trying to turn around and get your hit in, only for the enemy to pump you down out of your sight. And you'll die out of frustration rather than lack of skill, and this is amplified due to the save system that's been implemented where it can only be saved at certain parts of the game, which in itself I have no issue with, but then you have to beat the same batch of frustrating enemies all over again, and it feels like they actually cheese to get you. It just becomes rather annoying. Next comes the snappy nature of the shooting. Now your character is apparently some whiz special forces bloke, but alas, he shoots like he has the onset of arthritis. Look how slow he is here to aim down sights on the shotgun. 
is painfully slow, and the shooting itself doesn't feel like it should, with bullets seeming to miss way more than they do in other shooters. It could be that I'm shit, of course, but something doesn't feel right here, and it's only when you get things upgraded later on in the game do we see a more level playing field. Strangely, you have a stamina bar for dodging, but not when throwing swings on your axe. When in the midst of a fight with enemies, you'll try to heal up, but that too is slow and lethargic. Enemies themselves are okay at best, but given the nature of the story, I was really open for some more wild designs in how they attack you. Atomic Heart doesn't have bad combat per se, but rather it's just poorly executed. It tries too many fingers in all sorts of pies rather than mastering one aspect of it. So what about the non-combat moments, the areas of discovery where you get to explore the open world? For the most part, Atomic Heart is set in underground bunkers where corridors or vents link one area to the next. The issue here is that it spoon feeds you so much that you never actually feel like you're truly exploring. You'll have a little marker telling you where to go at all times. And on top of that, an ability that scans through locations showing you what's behind a wall or where items are. So the curiosity, excitement and just general spark is lost as you're always knowing where to go and what to do and how to be there. And the puzzles are usually the same in nature. Go to place X discover the electricity is out or discover that a key is bloody missing so off you go courtesy of your marker to find the item required to get into the next zone it's tedious and drawn out and just doesn't hit the mark at all there's an open world section where bunkers exist where you can sort of progress the main mission but enemies roam everywhere patrolling nonsensical areas as do security cameras dispatching repair bots to fix the bloody Roombas you've just taken out so it's this endless cycle where it's far easier to just run through the whole bloody level to get to the next section than it is to actually go exploring. Graphically though, things look up. Now Reggie is on a PC, playing on a 4080, thanks to my good mate Johnny Two Shoes, and I had no issue at all running this at full settings and max graphics, but I did do a little quick check online, and generally speaking, the performance is strong across the board, with most setups working well. Credit to the developers here. And in those opening scenes, the graphics are highly impressive, where lights beam down, enveloping in the city where reflections on the floor showcase its marble nature or how robots have that sort of porcelain look about them. The art style is superb and it very much feels like post-World War II era where the Soviets rule the roost. All the models and textures are high in fidelity and underground environments have a lot of detail to them which shows a world that has been savaged by robots. The open world sections though, whilst nice looking, do look samey, an issue I had with Halo Infinite, where it seems like a smart idea to do an open world, but it just lacks inventiveness. And my other issue here is the world itself, it just doesn't seem alive. You'll sort of come across bodies of dead soldiers, but not really much else. Even in the opening scene where I walk through a parade, the civvies look pretty static. As for the lighting, it's a tough one for Reggie because at times it's dramatic. The scene here as we go down the tunnel sets the mood nicely, but on the flip side, you never feel vulnerable, you never feel exposed or fearful for what's coming next in Atomic Heart. What the lighting does is simply light up the spaces so much that it takes away the threat. Not that this is a horror game of course, but you feel there are moments missed here. In the bunker segments for example, there is always lighting and it just feels off where it would have been nice to feel more exposure to robots hunting you from darkened areas. All things considered, this is a great looking game with some nice features, but it doesn't feel like it works as one cohesive piece, but rather the sum of its parts. Sound is solid with a nice musical score reminiscent of steampunk-esque rock with heavy beats ramping up as enemies come flooding towards you. It's almost John Wick infused and Reggie is all for it. Likewise, you'll hear the subtle string effects as something impending comes. Sound effects add a lot too, where it echoes out when items are hit by your axe or the thump of gunfire penetrates the little Roombas who keep coming for you. I love the sound of radios in the distance in particular, which really amplified the Soviet feel of the game. And overall, the sound package is very solid albeit nothing that really stands out in your memory. Atomic Art then is a crisscross of games where the ideas are strong, where on paper it sounds bloody amazing and upon first viewing it lives up to all the pre-release trailers. But as time progresses, the cracks begin to show, where the combat is tedious, where enemies are uninspiring, where the open world is frankly boring and above all else, you could throw a character who is the biggest prick of all that is around you. 
it's a shame then because you see some real talent on display here from the developers and for a first game you have to give them all the credit in the world but it's a miss from Reggie this time but I can't wait to see what Munfish come up with next and until next time my lovelies Reggie out.